Okay, so uh, we have with us today Mr. Joel Conkin, uh, an attorney with a client uh, that has some interest in the property down at the hospital. That's correct. You have a presentation for us. Today. Yes, All yes, right. I did. So, if, with your permission, I've prepared a draft of a resolution. Thank you. And you work quick, Joel. This is just, it is a draft, but I'm, it might be helpful. That y'all can follow along, and then if there's anything we need to tweak, uh, I'll I can do that and get that to the mayor or whoever I need to get it to as far as the agenda goes. Do you have another copy? I'm looking. <laughs> I wasn't sure how many to make. Uh, I can make one. Yeah, oh, I do. Okay, thanks. Okay. Hey, do you? <laughs> Thank you. Joe, if you'll give us just a second. I think I may be giving away my well, last one. I'll, I can take, I'll take a picture of it. Okay. Give, give you a picture. It'll take just a minute to read over Joe for Yeah.
to Wellmont, which is now Violet, of course, uh, this nine acres, roughly speaking. And in that deed, there was a reversionary clause that said if this property ever stopped being used for hospital purposes, it reverted to the county. Uh, and that was in the deed. So, not quite a number of years ago, back in 2009, Wellmont asked for a waiver of this reversionary interest for 1.675 acres uh, on which they constructed another building, and that was granted to them. Uh, so Dr. Sochdev subsequently, he ground, he leases this property from Wellmont Ballad pursuant to a ground lease and built this building. Uh, and he's been there for some time. So Dr. Sochdev would like to sell this property and this reversionary interest has been an impediment to that. As you might expect, a lot of people don't want to invest money when they feel like the rug can be pulled out from under them. Uh, so, more history in that this issue, this was brought before this commission three years, four years ago. Probably three years. Three or four years ago. Uh, it was first brought in June. First, 2021. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, okay. Good. So I wasn't sure about that exact timing, and it was actually passed uh, by by the commission, and then it was subsequently vetoed by the mayor at the time, and so it it was dropped at that point. So fast forward a few years, and Dr. Sochdev is. Have done well, he's, uh, and he's slowing down in his practice. Uh, but he still would like to to sell this building and uh, not have to be a landlord anymore, that sort of thing. So what he's done is he's actually transferred the LLC that owns this building to what's called a charitable remainder trust. And you may say, well, why, you know, why would he do that? Well, there's really two primary reasons. One is he genuinely cares about this area. Uh, and when I tell you what the chari charities are, you'll understand why, what I'm saying. And two, he gets a capital gains tax break when he sells the building. He doesn't have to pay capital gains on that. So that's you know, benefit to him as well, of course. So the way that the charitable remainder trust works is he he takes an income, of a payment amount annually for 10 years, and then what's left at the end of that 10 years then goes to the charities. And this is all approved under the IRS rules and guidelines and all that sort of stuff. So just from an actuarial point of view, we hired a company to run a calculation based on a $4.75 million valuation, which is what the what it appraised for. We, we did get a current appraisal. And that suggests that the value to charity would be almost $2 million at the end of that period if it sold for 4.75. So you put that in a bank, he takes his 10% annually, but of course it's earning interest or return on the investment during that period of time too. And so he takes his payments for 10 years and then at the end it goes to the charity specified in the trust. Well, the charities specified in the trust are valid. Uh, and I just want to make sure I read this correctly, so I want to read it verbatim. 
90% to Ballot Foundation for sole benefit of Wellmont Hawkins County Memorial Hospital with the funds to be used to provide health care healthcare services from the hospital and medical office buildings located at 851 Locust Street, Rogersville, and 401 Senate Drive, Rogersville. So what he's doing is basically saying, Ballot, you get the money, but you have to use it on this site in Rogersville for support of those services, which he can legally do. And then the other 10% goes to Hawkins County with the funds to be used for benefit of Hawkins County Public School Schools, and I'm reading verbatim from the trust. I didn't make 20, 10 copies of this because it's like 25 pages, but I'm happy to show it to anybody. Uh, 10% to Hawkins County with the funds to be used for the benefit of the Hawkins County Public Schools or the Hawkins County Health Department as determined at Hawkins County's discretion. Uh, but then it goes on to say, if Wellmont is not operating a hospital at 851 Locust Drive and providing services at 401 Scenic Drive, then all the money or property goes to Hawkins County. So, what, frankly, what we're trying to do is create a win-win-win situation where, or at least a win for Dr. Soch Dev and for the county in that we know his goal, you know, he likes the saving of the capital gains taxes, obviously, but, and he gets a certain amount of income for, from it for 10 years, but he also wants to see Ballad continue to provide services in this, at that location. And I think that's what Hawkins County wants. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's trying to do everything he can to incentivize them to stay and do that. And, just 100%, I have no inside information from Ballad about what their plans are. I'm not, you know, do not read into this. They've said they're leaving. They have not said that, that I know of, okay? This is just, I think some fear, frankly, that's, that's and some thoughts that have been expressed by this commission in the past that they are worried that, you know, a lot of rural hospitals haven't done well, are not doing well financially. So I can't emphasize that enough because I don't want anybody coming behind me and saying, well, you said ballot was leaving. I'm not saying that. I have not said that. In fact, if anything, I've sort of said the opposite, you know, uh, expressed intent about what they can do with the building and that sort of thing. But so what would happen is if if the county waives this, then we believe we can sell this building for roughly the 4.75, which would go into a trust, maybe more. You know, I can't guarantee you what the price would be, but that's that's about what it sold for last time. And we couldn't get the reversion approved, so it fell through. Uh, and so that would go into a trust. Dr. Soch's dad would get his income interest for 10 years. And then at the end, the county would get, hopefully it's 10% because the hope is that ballot continues to operate as is. And that's a huge carrot out there for them because if they continue to do that, they're gonna get 90% of what's left, which is gonna be somewhere one and a half to two million dollars. You know, so why wouldn't they stay and operate? That's a pretty big, pretty big uh, amount of money. So that's where we're at. Uh, I know that's a lot, you know, it's kind of complicated. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, a new owner of that building Somebody that pays that kind of money is going to invest in the property, going to maintain it, going to do everything they can to uh, keep it productive. 
And if if that sale happens, then Hawkins County is going to come out on the back side of this, you know, hopefully in good shape with its health care services intact and the 10% of the fund balance from the trust at the end of the day. So I guess I'll open it up to questions. Um, I'm happy to try and you know, I've done my best to explain sort of the rationale behind the structure. Uh, but if there's any questions I can answer, I'd be happy to do that. So if this were, if we were to pass this and this building was to be sold, the services in that building currently would no longer exist. Correct? No, no, I think that there are, there are existing leases to the VA and to Bala that are in place that the new buyer would assume those leases and be subject to those leases until they expire. Uh, but they probably have buyout clause, correct? Well, no, not typically, no. I mean, and, and frankly, I can't imagine someone would buy that building and want the VA out. I mean, they're, that's the perfect tenant. You know, they pay their rent. It's the government, pretty much guaranteed money. I, I, I would never say never, but I'd be completely shocked if that were to happen. I, I don't know why anybody would do that. I mean, they're a good payer. The rent's good. I just don't. I just don't think that's likely. Um, but the sale of this could. It could. We can't say that it won't happen. Well, it just would no longer be back to county property. Is that correct? If we pass it. Well, who's in that building has nothing to do with that reversionary interest. I know, but the reversionary interest would be if we were to, you know, waive this. <coughs> well, well, they buy it and say, "I'm not renewing anybody." Well, but as long, the reversionary interest is not really triggered by what goes on in this building. It's triggered by whether. Ballot is operating the hospital or not. Have we heard from Ballot up there? Well, they really don't, you know, they haven't given us any, any indication of I'm any on, change. I'm on the advisory board yeah. of that hospital, mm -hmm. and there's nothing, nothing been mentioned, no trends trending that way. They keep saying we're going to keep it here. You hear about all these little ones closing. Now, whether, you know, that holds in the future or not, I, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, they have they have determined to keep this hospital here. And, and so the way I look at it is, if it stands as it is now, and they they don't continue operating, we get the property back, right? Not the building. Uh, but if we, if we let them do this, if it stops operating, we get the whole thing. We get the property again anyway, right? That's correct. Because yeah. the trust... We well, have a wild elephant sitting over there forever. And so the trust only owns 0.66 acres, Dr. Sochdev's building. Mm -hmm. The hospital building, you know, it's sort of a separate right. animal, so to speak. But if they... My understanding is that the, the earlier waiver to ballot applies to their adjacent building, right? There's another medical office building there, right? Right, right? Yeah, right. So, but the hospital building, I believe, is still subject to this murder, and we're not asking to change that. This is just for that one building. The point six six. that's correct. Uh, and it's you know it's basically the same thing that was done for Wellmont years ago. But I guess what my point is is that who's in that building that Dr. Sochdev owns now? I mean, he could have nobody in there, or he could let's just say the VA canceled the lease or whatever it expired, and he wanted to put. You know, 
ABC business in there, he could because they're still operating the hospital. You know, that whole reversion is triggered by that, not what's in Dr. Sockstead's building, if that makes sense. So Dr. Sock, the doctor could, uh, I mean, if he wanted to, to your point, us approving this does not, if we didn't approve it, he could still change who leases the offices in his building. So During the term of his lease. He yeah. could still be the landlord. I mean, he could lease it to anybody he wanted to, really. I mean, he has, again, he doesn't, he loves to have the PA there, any yes. landlord would, you know, they're a great tenant. And so it's valid to be a tenant who has the rest, other part of the space. Uh, so he doesn't have any plans to change any of that, of course. But those leases will eventually expire. And even if he sold it to XYZ, they would be subject to those leases until they expire. They can't just terminate them. More than likely, the hospital shuts down and the business that's in there, besides the bathroom, would probably be gone too because it's associated with Valley. Well, and then the bathrooms are not going to be able to pay the rent and be able to keep the building sustainable. So, well, I, I mean, I think if I owned that building and Valley moved out, I sure would still keep the VA in there because they're paying something, something better than nothing. I mean, they're paying a good amount of rent, frankly. I mean, it's a good lease. Yeah, it took us years to get that veteran center there. Yeah. And it'd be a shame to lose it because we all know the one up in Johnson City is not paying them. Yeah. Keep maintaining the patients that they've got, let alone mm -hmm. these patients that start going up there. Well, and, and you know, that is my concern, just thinking through the steps in the future. If a, a new company or an individual buys that property and they finish out those leases, it seems reason that if you spend $4.75 million on a building, you're going to have to adjust how much money that building is generating. So you're going to have to also adjust, adjust the cost of the lease, which also makes me worried that the VA is going to say, yeah, we don't want to go up that much in our rent, so we're out. You know, so... Well, I think... I mean, that's... I can't say that's impossible, but... <clears throat> the value of that building is really based upon those rents that it's getting now. Exactly. Well, and that's, that's, that's true. But, you know, from what Dr. Sochdev paid, what his initial investment is in that building, he's able to, to adjust his profit margin based on what his investment is. Whoever buys it next is going to have a much greater investment in it than Dr. Sochdev does. So, therefore, it stands, stands the reason that they're going to increase the lead. You know, and, and so we're getting into the weeds of talking mm -hmm. about businesses. And we're we're yeah. working on commission rights. So right. We don't, we don't run a business. <laughs> uh, but well, I'm an attorney. I don't run businesses. Yeah. Either. So well, I, I guess I guess my concern is though, as a county commission and as a veteran, mm -hmm. to be honest, I, I don't want to lose our veteran yes. organization. And I think that's the biggest concern that we all have is. Number one, I believe if you own private property, you should be able to sell that private property and you should be able to make a profit off of it as much as you can because I'm also a capitalist and I believe that you know should, you should be able to do that however you can within obvious reason and understanding the reversionary agreements that put this in place. Mm -hmm. But and and I'll for the record say nobody said the VA's leaving, nobody said Val was leaving. I won't make that clear. Yeah. Nobody's even saying that. But what I'm saying is look at the big picture. It, it is a little concerning to me that whoever buys it is going to have a higher investment. They're going to have to adjust the profit margin, which stands the reason we're going to increase the price for that lease. And I really hope that if that happens, the VA does it. I think we understand the concern. <coughs> no one thought the ICU is in control of the VA either. And it no secret that now, you know, they've cut their costs at the rural hospital. Well, that's about all we're running up here, right there. Yeah. Which is honestly is a completely separate issue from what we're even discussing. But what's in this what's in this building though be discussed is directly tied to Ballot as a hospital is going to need to operate right there. I mean, whether we approve this or not, Ballot could up and leave and it doesn't matter what we do. What Other is. than if Ballot up and left, we the property would revert back to us. Yeah. That's the only catch. 
Well, what, what frankly, we're trying to do is sweeten the pot for ballot to stay by offering them the inducement of getting a very significant amount of money to my budget than not have it in my budget. Yeah, but you can replace the hospital for two million dollars. That's what they do. You got to look after the healthcare community. Well, the, honest to goodness, though, ballot's responsibility. No, I don't want to go there. That's not supposed to be conversation. Is that attorney looked at this? Uh, I, I sent it to him today. What was his opinion? He hasn't gotten back to me yet. Well, if we, Tom, you're pretty involved in real estate. Do you have any thoughts? The chair might have to abstain from this issue. I'll pack the money for Well, Josh is involved in real estate too, so do you have any? Well, I think that. I, I think that. I don't know that I have any thoughts on it in terms of real estate. I mean, it just comes down to whether we're, the deal's pretty straightforward. We're losing, we'd be losing a reversionary interest in point, a little over half acre, right, is, is what we'd be doing. We would retain reversionary interest for the remaining land. Is that about right? seven acres, yeah, six. I don't know the exact amount, because you waived it for 1.6, Seven. It was nine point eight four to start with, and then another point six six, so yeah. roughly two point two. So it's about seven and a half. Yeah, would be left, and that's basically, I think, the hospital footprint. So we we waived it on two zero point zero one that parcel. That's my understanding. Yeah. Is that correct? You know, what's what's. What's the chance that some that the ballot shows up and says, hey, we're selling a hospital, you get rid of your reversionary agreement there too, you've already done it twice? I, I don't know if it holds if they still, if a new owner would operate as a hospital, I don't know if that holds or not. Um, you know, that'd be a discussion at that point in time. I don't, I don't know that any other hospital group would want to come in and scoop it up. But I'm also conflicted because this gentleman owns his property, and uh, you know I feel like he owns it. He ought to have the right to sell it. Well, yeah. He, but he, but he did do it on the terms of this reversionary agreement. Uh, I get that. Well, it was back before I think you were on the commission, Josh. Uh, we talked about this the first time, and there was a sale pending, correct, John? Yes. And they backed out because they wouldn't own the land underneath. And just to be clear, there is not, we're just trying to be proactive. We do not have, I mean, there could be somebody step forward tomorrow, but we do not have a contract with anybody right now. You know, he's talked to some people, but it's not, there's no done deal or anything like that right now. If you know somebody, he's interested. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is a different situation than last time. Because of the trust that he's well, we've act because of the trust, but also we do not have a penny tire. I mean, we don't have a signed purchase agreement like we had last time. So I looked it up on the on the real estate assessment data mm -hmm. in the um, and it it does say the value of the property itself is sixty one thousand nine hundred dollars according to the market appraisal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really what we're talking about is the property under the building. We're not talking about the building itself because the building itself, if I'm looking at it correctly, the building itself is valued at almost 2.3 million. Yeah, I mean, it's about a 20,000 square foot building. I think you can, I'm sure you can double check me on here, but it's a pretty good size building. Yeah. 10,577. Uh, Square feet, yeah. So I guess that's the base. Is that each floor? No, yeah, for each floor. So 20,000. 20, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, you and I worked on this last time. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was the one you talked to a lot. I voted in favor of it. Yeah. Uh, I voted, and the reason I voted in favor of it last time was because 
of what I said earlier, it's it's owned, it's a private building owned by an individual who wants to sell it for the purpose of retiring and making his money back. And mm -hmm. you know, I voted in favor of it last time before you had the right. charitable trust. Um, you know, the, the the reason why it fell through is because the mayor at the time vetoed it because he in the conversation I had with him, didn't feel like we needed to just give up our interest in property. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, you know, once we talked that through, I understood that. And I guess if I had voted on it again, I'd probably still vote in favor of it. Mm -hmm. um, because I, you know, the, the only the only kicker here, and I think another commissioner said, Josh just said it, is when Dr. Sostad built the building, he knew the reversionary interest agreement was in place. He knew it was there when he built it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's the only piece of that's the only rub that I have here is that he yeah. knew it was there when he started. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful that he did because we have a VA there. We're grateful that he did because we have valid, another valid office there. I mean, it's a wonderful building. I've been in it. But, um, you know, we kind of need this up front. Yeah. I, um, Can we do this with the building below? That's what, yeah. There, there was a reversionary interest that was given up. That's what I think Mr. Conklin was yes. saying. Yes, in 2009. 20101. Which those interest, and I, you did tell me something I wasn't aware of. I was under the impression that a medical facility had to be in that building. But what you're saying is they could build a skating room in that building. And as long as valid is there, the hospital is there. Well, what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you from the reversionary, from the deed itself, if I can get to the right page. And I, I guess I did make copies of this. Uh, well, maybe that's not maybe that's not the right document. I can get you that language, but yes, that's my understanding. Is uh, maybe it's in this agreement. You know, three seventy six one sixty five. And I get my own concern, and we kind of held this is. As of right now, the services in that building obviously feel like the rent is at a fair price for them to stay there. A new owner can come in and price them out. Which would hurt the new owner, too, though. I mean, yeah, I, see, I think. Unless there's other motors already. Well, I can get you the terms of the. Uh, I mean, they can't reprice it till the lease expires, one, and I believe that VA lease is pretty long term. Uh, but I can't quote you the exact. But I can get it. Uh, but I mean, they could do that anyway. I mean, Doctor Sachdev, the skating rink would pay more than the VA. He could do that anyway. Uh, but I mean, I just about bet my life that ain't going to happen. You're not going to find a better tenant than the VA, and there'd be absolutely zero reason anybody would want them out that I can think of. I'd like to know how long the leases are. I can get you that information. So let's play this out. Let's say that um, Dr. Sonstead continues to own the building for the long term future. Mm -hmm. And while no one has said this, let's make it clear again, Valid mm -hmm. decides one day well, we're going to shut the hospital down in Wilkins County, mm -hmm. which is not going to happen. Yeah. And so it reverts back, the property reverts back to Hawkins County. What do we do with it? You can't do much with it with the building sitting on it. Do, do we do we then immediately become partners with Dr. Sopstead at that point? I don't know. That's a Joel question. Well, I mean, the building sits on the dirt. You know, you don't have the right to occupy the dirt, so you either <clears throat> take the building with you or you leave. <laughs> <laughs> With this and for that reason is why it's hard to sell it as it is. It's, it's almost no impossible. Take that risk. Yeah. I mean, at some point you're going to get a ghosted building because no one's really willing to put any money into it because they know it's sitting on this potential rug pull. 
for like, you know. That like, really, they have zero control over because that's it's not right. dependent on anything that they do. It's mm -hmm. all dependent on what Ballard does in a building across the road from Fry. And I think there would be some sentiment that, well, why would Hawkins County pull the rug? Even if Ballard left, why would they pull the rug on this? Because there's a VA there. You know, so if that happened, I suspect whoever owned it would come back and say, do you really want to do this? Yeah. Well, it, it stands to reason that if if the hospital ceased to exist and the property reverted back to the county, that the county could have a financial gain in having that building. He, Trying to sell it to you. You didn't give up your reversionary interest and in I own the building, so it's going to sit empty and good luck. You know, he could. I don't know the doctor's I don't know. I don't know. Well, he. Did. I mean, he's obviously trying to do what he can to. Right. I mean, everything he can to try and get ballot to stay as long as they can and incentivize that because that's in his best interest to have that space leased to them on the first floor and I can't remember if VA's on the first floor or ballot's on the second. But ballot's on the first, VA's yeah. on the second. So, but regardless, I mean that's in his financial best interest and is in the county's best interest as far as its citizens go. So. And we're trying to make it in Ballard's best interest to study. Hey, I guess what I've got stuck in my mind is, and, and I'm going to say it again, and if it's not right, then correct me, but as it is now, if he or a ballot gets out and we, we we get the property back, right? If we give him that property now and do away with the reversionary rights, mm -hmm. the rest of that contract kicks in and we get it back anyway. That's correct. See, that's the thing that we have switched is under the trust. If ballot leaves, Hawkins County becomes the sole beneficiary of the trust and they get it at the end of the 10 years anyway. Um, until whatever the cost of, the original cost is paid off, right? So it's, if, it, if we bought it for 4.75 million, I said, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, the way that that works is, you know, if it sells for 4.75, that goes into the trust account. Dr. Thoxdev takes his annual payment, and which is 10%. And so that's calculated to be about two million dollars left at the end of ten years, and that is just you know based on IRS numbers. Then, if the if the building hasn't been sold, that's what the LLC still owns, and the trust still owns the building, so it would just all go back to the county anyway if the building. So that wasn't a good. If it has been sold, it's cash and investments, right? So you get the money at the end of ballot left, if which is roughly two million dollars, which is pretty good, probably close to the value of this building, uh, or at least the reversionary interest. And if if the building hasn't sold, you get the building. That's so many ballots gone. Yeah, yes. So looking within a 10 year window, um, whoever buys it the next time, they may not want to own it for the next 10 years. They might want to own it for the next six years if they bought it tomorrow. Um, so how does, you know, what, what's the long term if the, if the property ownership changes again after it sales, if it sales, when it sales, if it, if the property ownership changes again, how does it change that trust? It doesn't, because we'd have the cash. At that point, the building is completely out of the trust. That's correct. The, the money's in the trust. The sale would be in the trust. <coughs> so any future plans of the building wouldn't affect the trust at all? It would not affect the trust, that's correct. Because it wouldn't own it, it would have gotten the proceeds from the sale. And if Ballard's still there, 
then Ballard gets 90, the county gets 10, and plus the county gets the health care services. Ballard's not there, the county gets everything, all the cash. I think, just think about it logically, I think the risk of future owners evicting the VA or even forcing the VA out with rent increases is pretty low. And I think that would be a, if I was buying that building, that would be the tenant I want to keep. No, that's the selling point of this. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, it's the selling and point. You think about the location of the building, I mean, what tenant would they find that would pay what the on time would be the tenant that the VA is? Um, my question is, if something happens to Dr. Sashev now, um, I guess what I'm saying is potentially, like if, if something happened to, to Dr. right now, this deal blows up and we end up with a building or whatever, with, by allowing him to sell this, and it's most likely going to be maintained as a medical office building, I would imagine, um, then we could help a private investor would want to maintain that relationship with the VA. And so we could help shore this up long term by allowing a private investor to own it. Well, to be sold. I said that at the beginning. I think someone who invests that kind of money in the building is going to be more attentive landlord than Dr. Sodstaff, who frankly is getting older and wants to retire and you know wants to be out of out of this business. You know, as a landlord, he he lives in Pennsylvania now, and it's not easy to uh, you know to to manage to building like that. Now, he's got a good management team, and I think it's in, he's doing a good job, but it's not something he wants to do forever. So I can get you the dates of the leases when they're expected to expire. Um, is there any other information or questions I can answer for you guys? In the meantime, do you all want to say pass this on to the full commission because Monday's the deadline for resolution? Not, not until I, I don't think I think we should hear from the entire people. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not hearing from the entire And it helps. It helps that you just said that there's no pending deal on the table right now, anyway. Correct. That's right. I mean, we if we need to kick it for a month, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I mean, we would like to get it resolved sooner rather than later, but if that increases y'all's comfort level, we can do that. So make sure I understand clearly. Today, if if the hospital stops being a hospital today, we get all that land back, potentially get a building with it. Right. If, if we didn't sublease it back to, to uh, Dr. Sonstead, um, if we approve this and the hospital becomes no longer a hospital, we get two million dollars ish in ten years, um, and we don't have to fool with the vacant building. A private investor would still own that. Well, Doctor Sachdev presumably still owns it, or his distrust owns it. Yeah. yeah. Trying to set up a system where we're going, our community's going to benefit from right. 
you know, so let him know I, I really am. I just want to make sure that on behalf of the citizen talks and we're doing what's best for them. Sure. Sure. Uh, so that's that's the only reason why I'm I'm not interested to send it on today. But I, I do I, at first glance the plan looks great. Yeah. So what you're saying is we need to get a copy of the leases and have another buildings committee meeting before with, before the September with, with Mr. Cap. Yes. Yeah. I just I don't know what the VA does or doesn't allow as far as copies of the leases okay. with us. But it, just a summary for me saying generally when it expires yeah. and, and what their options might be. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's pretty long term, but I'll double check and let y'all know. And I'll send that to you, Mark, and you can share it with because I don't have everybody's. I'll be interested to know if there's a disclosure clause in there where you, uh, yeah, like within 90 days, ask you to make everything six months or whatever. Well, there's very few leases that don't have that in there, so uh, the I'd be shocked, but I will double check. I mean, the buyer typically buys a property subject to the tenant's leases that exist on it when they close, right? So uh, I, I doubt there's anything in the lease that says that the lease can be canceled if the property is transferred, but I'll double check for that. He would be selling his sublease, is that right, in the in the actual building? Because he doesn't have ownership in the ground. Yeah, that's if he right. do this, he still doesn't own the ground. Is that that's right? That's right. Yeah. It's a. It's a. Act. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, technically, it's a sub sublease because. The ground is leased to Wellmont through 2070. So it's pretty much like owning it because it's so long a period of time. People will buy it and pay full price because, you know, they don't look at a return on an investment for 60 years. They look at it in the next 20 or 30 years. Uh, but so there's a ground lease. Well, on it goes through 2070, and I guess that's actually where those reversionary interests are, at, are in. Post. But I'll get you that information too because I did, I wasn't able to quote you the exact language that's in the deed or in that reversion. I won't be able to do that. So, who are they? So who is well on leasing the ground from uh, Hawkins County Hospital, the original Hawkins County Hospital? I believe. If you'll give me a second, I've got it on my computer if I can pull it up. Was there internet in here? Uh, I doubt you will put in Guest. I'll get that information to you. I was okay. curious because that's, mm -hmm. I mean, even if we remove this reversionary, I mean, that's still a complicated sale. Even if that's well, serious. that's, that can be that way. People buy ground leases, yeah. stuff built on ground leases all the time. If there's 50 years left on it, which is roughly what's left on this one. But this, I mean, for a buyer, if Val leaves in six months, then they revert back and it's done deal. I mean, it's not 50 years, it's six months now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hence the problem. <laughs> yeah, what would happen to that property if it would revert to the county? Who would it revert to? If it, it would not. Well, I mean, when the ground lease is up, it goes back to the owner of the dirt, but that's not till 2070. The reverter, that's the problem is, if you stop being a hospital, we get it back. To the county. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, pick this up. I don't know what the right motion is. Postpone. Postponed to a date certain to the next public buildings meeting for Mr. Cowell can join us. Uh, motion was made to postpone definitely until the next public buildings meeting. Second by Mr. Palmer. Any further discussion on the motion? Are we going to set a date for that today? Well, I mean, it's going to probably be up to Mr. Cowell on what he can be. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Well, I'll talk, I know Alan a little bit. I'll talk to him and uh, get him all the information that he wants. And you know, you'll, need do my best. you'll need to explain to him the trust and all. Yeah, that. I, I mean, I'll, I'll plan on yeah. having this similar conversation with him and you know, going through all the documents and everything, and you know, hopefully I can answer his questions and. Then we'll get back before this committee sometime in the next month or so, hopefully, and go from there. All right. All in favor of uh, postponing definitely until the next public building meeting, let me know by saying aye. Uh, aye. All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Uh,